Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today's question is elite code 797, all paths from source to target. So given a directed acyclic graph of n nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1, find all possible paths from 0 to node n minus 1 and return them in any order. The graph is given as follows. Graph i is a list of all nodes you can visit from node i. There is a directed edge from node i to node graph ij. So in example 1, we have this graph. And we want to find out how many paths there are from the starter node, which is zero, as stated in the question, zero to n minus one. n minus one is three. So the amount of paths we have from zero to three is one from zero to three and two from zero, one, three. And we need to return the output as an array of arrays containing those paths, right? It's not just the count to count how many paths there are, but to return the actual paths themselves. So let's jump into the walkthrough. So as soon as we're working out all the possible paths, we are going to be using recursion. But firstly, we need to look at graph. Let's look at the indices, zero, one, two, three. The indices are the nodes themselves and the values at each indice are their neighbors. As you can see, zero has one and two. So one and two, one has three. And as you can see within the graph, one is pointing to three. So this is essentially an adjacency list, which we can use when formulating our recursive function. So we start at zero, right? We pass this into our recursive function. We're also going to have to pass in an array, right? And this is going to be the current array. This is what we're going to be using to build out the results, right? So we are going to have a result array down here. So at this level of the recursive call, we're going to have the current array. So we'll call it CA and we are immediately going to pass in zero to our current array. So within our next recursive call, we're going to pass in this current array and we're also going to pass in the new node. But here's the trick. We don't know the new node just yet, but we do know within this graph that zero points to one and two, which are the neighbors, right? So those are going to be the new nodes which we need to pass into the recursive call. So we can loop through these. We can pass one into the recursive call as well as the current array. So when we recurse to one, we're going to have the current array which is equal to zero, we're immediately going to pass one into it. So that's CA. And then we're going to repeat the process, right? So we're going to recurse to three, passing in the current array as well as one's neighbor, which is three. And then we update current array within this recursive call. So it's going to be zero, one, and three. And now, as you can see, we've gone from zero to n minus one. We have to make the check. So if the current node we're on is equal to graph.length minus one, so graph.length minus one, is equal to three. So if the node we're on, this node right here, is equal to graph.length minus one, we have found a solution from the start node to n minus one node. And we can push this into results. Simple enough, right? Now, in order to check all other possible solutions within this graph, we need to backtrack. And in order to do that, we need to pop off our current array. And the reason we pop off is when we go back up the recursive call, we need to make sure that our current array is zero, one. So we go back up the recursive call, we realize there's no other directions we can take at node one. So we pop off, we backtrack, we're at zero now, and we've only checked one here. So we need to check two. So we pass in the current array and two within our recursive call. We immediately update our current array with the value of the current node, which is two. We look in graph at the index of two, we find its neighbor, which is three. So we recurse passing in the current array and three. So when we get here, again, we update the current array immediately and we make the check. So is the node wrong, this value here, equal to the length of the graph minus one? Yes, it is. So we can push this into results. Now we know that we found all the solutions here, but our program is stupid, right? So again, we're gonna have to backtrack, backtrack to check all of the possible solutions. So we pop off current array, we go up to the previous recursive call, we pop off of two, previous recursive call, we pop off current array, and then we return results. And that is the basic understanding of this solution. Time complexity of the solution is a bit tricky, but let's work this out. So say we have one point into two. There are two nodes within this graph and there is one path. Let's say we add a new node. So we say one, two, but we also have three. We have increased our paths. So we have one here, we have increased it to three. So just from adding one node, we have doubled the amount of paths. So that would be two to the power of n minus one minus one in terms of time complexity. Now within this graph, the intermediate paths equates to O of n, right? Because we can have n minus two intermediate paths. 
And what I mean by that is going from zero to three, there is one path, zero to two, there is two paths. There are four nodes within this tree. So that will equal n minus two, which equates to on. So then time complexity for this will be two to the power of n times n. And then space is going to be on because we are using recursion. This includes the stack data structure, which equates to on, where n is the number of nodes. So there's not much code to this. We first initialize a result array. Then we create the function. Let's call it backtrack. We pass in current node and current array as parameters. And when we call it, we pass in zero, which is the starter node and an empty array. Then immediately when we enter this backtrack recursive call, we're going to have to pass in or push into current array, rather the current node. So now we need to make the check whether we've gone from zero to n minus one. So we found a potential path and we do that by checking if current node is equal to graph dot length minus one. If it is, then we just push into res a copy of current array. Then we can get the neighbors and loop through the neighbors, right? So we said the neighbors would be equal to graph at current node, because remember the graph is essentially an adjacency list. Then we can loop through those neighbors. So n of neighbors. And we can, and then we can call the backtrack function, passing in n and current array. And lastly, we need to backtrack. So we need to pop off of current array. And then all that's left to do is return res. Give this a run. Submit it. And there you go.